Welcome to the Putback SNY.TV. I'm Ian Begley, SNY's NBA insider, and we're here to break all things down. Knicks and the NBA for the next half hour or so. A little bit later on, we will get Villanova's Chris Jenkins, NCAA national champion, teammate of the Nova Knicks. We're looking forward to talking to Chris, but we're going to start it off with a great guest here, Mike Messer, trainer of several NBA players, Michael Porter Jr. and of course, New York's OG Ananobi. So we're here to talk to Mike about OG, all things OG. Obviously, Ananobi coming off of a great game against the Chicago Bulls last night. They get 24 points, four or six from beyond the arc, just looking really sharp after that elbow hiccup. And Mike, let's start here. What did you think of what you saw from OG last night against Chicago? Yeah, well, first of all, um, you know, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Um, you know, OG uh, bounced back in a way that I expected him to. It is a process um, whenever you're coming back from injury, especially on your shooting, <clears throat> on your shooting elbow. And uh, yeah, shot the ball great. We obviously we watched a lot of film after the first game and was just looking at uh, some of the decision making, some of the spots he's getting to. Last night, really love the aggressiveness, getting kind of involved early on. Um, love some of the quick little actions they did at the beginning of the game to, to kind of get him some touches easy and uh, in, in early on. And, and OG had a great game. So, Mike, you spend a lot of time working with OG out of season, in season. I'm going to ask you about that. But I'd like to ask you first a little bit about OG's approach to the game, just based on what you see. How does he approach his craft? <clears throat> OG is a very fun client to work with because he is very obsessive over the details, which are the, you know, the, my favorite clients to work with are, are, uh, are also film junkies like myself. Um, mm -hmm. and OG is, OG is that to a T. I mean, he is OG's, uh, approach to the game is he's, he is a very hard worker. He is, um, a guy who is kind of always just, I mean, since he, you know, first was, you know, going into college and going into the NBA has always been a player that I think is better than most people give him credit for. Most people recognize right away. And then every, no matter where he's been, whether it's been, you know, Indiana or then Toronto, or obviously now in New York, um, uh, everyone eventually comes around to, uh, the same thing, which is that, you know, it comes around to an understanding that OG is one of the best defenders in the world while also being uh, a very good offensive player. And uh, so his approach to the game is definitely just, um, you know, one who's constantly on the search to, to get better and better. I'm sure uh, Tom Thibodeau and the Nick coaching staff, I'm sure appreciate that approach. But what about, you know, just this personality? Is he all business? I, I really enjoyed with the media where, you ask him a question, he's going to give you an answer. He's not going to waste many words, but he's going to tell you kind of what's on his mind. And uh, I've, I've appreciated that approach. But personality-wise for OG, is he serious all the time in the gym? Like, how does that, how does he come off to you? You know, he gives you the facts as far as what's going on in the game, what's going on in, in his mind. And and uh, sometimes you have to dig to get a little bit of uh, more of an elaborate answer out of him. But he's... He's just a guy who's, who's really all about business, but as far as off the court stuff and even in the locker rooms, uh, great guy, great teammate to be around. Um, but again, one who, someone who is very, you know, he's, he's got a great personality. He's fun to be around. He likes to joke and have fun, but he's, you know, but a lot of times from the outside, you wouldn't necessarily know that because what you see is him, you know, making a three pointer or making an incredible defensive play and, and kind of having that same, a stoic look on his face because he's you know he's he's very much about the business of basketball but he enjoys it as well for sure mm -hmm. and can we talk a little bit about off-season and in-season work and how you guys approach that are you are you in well it was toronto and now new york are you in his city often in season it's a lot of film work I'm still seeing him in person a lot. Usually a couple times a month I'm coming in town whether that's you know coming to new york obviously now or when he was in Toronto, making tons of trips to uh, to obviously to their facility and staying in town usually for a few days at a time to uh, get some work in, make some adjustments, uh, see kind of where his game is trending, both positively and negatively, and just really uh, focusing on some of the things he's doing well and trying to get to those specific actions or reads a little bit more consistently. And then for the things that we think we need to improve on, you know, trying to cut out the fat, cut out some bad decision-making or cut out some of the, you know, 
inefficient movements in his game and, and try to go from there. So it's a lot of a lot of decision making based on trends during the season because you don't get as much time where you're just working out every day. Um, so we pick and choose our spots and, and then uh, just make sure that we're not just counting on all the work that we put in the off season, but also getting better throughout the season by making those adjustments and diving into the film as well. And I'm wondering when you're talking about film study, um, is can you give us an example of kind of what you guys will dive into and, and what you're looking for? He's looking for to study when you're putting clips together and watching clips. Yeah. So there's a lot that goes into the film study. I mean, the film, uh, it sounds kind of cliche sometimes, but like film doesn't lie. The, the answers are always in the film. If someone is playing well, the answer's in the film. If someone's struggling, the answers are in the film. So we always go to the film first um, to see what we're doing and, and what that process looks like is you know, usually within an hour or so after the game, um, I have access to the film. I'm, I'm going through a lot of the clips or going through some specific things that I'm noticing while watching live and then making notes of and then coming back to when i when i look at the film after and pull those clips send that to to og and we look at those uh sometimes it's it's something as specific as um specific reads or or times when i feel like we either have uh you know for his particular case especially when you're joining a new team a lot of times it's picking and choosing our spots how we're being properly aggressive enough um how we are, you know, when we're being aggressive, trying to not be you know, just a one-dimensional yeah, offensive player, which I think last right. night he did a good job of both knocking down three-pointers, but also being aggressive getting to the rim. Mm -hmm. and, um, and and also getting to those mid-range spots as well. So you're looking at where's he getting his shots? How are we getting to those spots? Um, were the reads, when we, when we got to those spots, were they the correct read? We're looking at all that decision-making. And then sometimes it's also as detailed as just, Hey, we're missing our shot. Let's look at our shot right now when we're in a little bit of a slump versus when we were shooting well. What's our balance look like? What's our what's our guide hand look like? Uh, you know, tendency. You know, especially in the NBA with the length that players play against all the time now, it's very common that players come into um, the season shooting with very good balance and very good mechanics, and then sometimes when you're trying to shoot over someone who's you know as athletic and tall as these guys are, sometimes. Uh, players have a tendency to not finish their shot all the way or to twist. I think we we might have lost Mike for a second here, but he was he was talking about the work that he's doing with OG Ananobi, and obviously Nick's fit fantastic with Ananobi in the lineup, uh, I think 17 and 3, and I'm, I'm lifting this from Tommy Beer. They are plus 23 in net rating in OG Ananobi's 700 minutes. So it's been fantastic with Ananobi. Ananobi, obviously, free agent uh, this summer. And I, I'd be surprised if the Knicks uh, didn't bring him back because you don't make the trade that you make if you're the Knicks sending out what you sent out uh, for a, a few months of a player. You make that trade for several years of a player. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, so in the here and now, obviously, OG looking very good. I wanted to ask Mike about the – injuries a little bit and uh and unfortunately we lost him but maybe we could get him back later on to, to do that and get into that but let's talk about the slam magazine cover today that was released the nova nicks on the cover i think this was the first cover of a traditional slam magazine with nick teammates since julius randall rj barrett graced the cover spring of 2001 nicks heading into their playoff series and so nova nicks on the cover and we've got another nova player for here nova let no for you nova legend really not just a player a legend chris jenkins ncaa champion hit arguably one of the biggest shots in college basketball history when he hit a three to win the title game over north carolina theo pinson in north carolina and uh, that shot you know lives on and it'll live on forever chris we are honored to be joined by you my friend what uh what you think of the cover shot have you picked up the slam magazine yet and uh is it on your wall yet i think it's pretty cool man I think the, the better ones that's come out recently and i definitely got a chance to take a look at it and i you know i'm gonna definitely grab me a few for sure just uh just it just makes sense <laughs> Now, let, just to, to give everybody a little recap, and correct me if I'm wrong, four years with Josh Hart, two years with Jalen Brunson and Dante DiVincenzo, 
and I think three years with Mikhail Bridges across the river. Um, these three guys, Hart, Dante, Jalen, now they're in the starting lineup, uh, in the same starting lineup. They've got a chance here to win 50 games. And you watch this season. Are you surprised by their success at this level, these guys together? No, not at all. I'm definitely not surprised by that success. You know, uh, they're, they, they work extremely hard. They're three great human beings and, you know what I mean, they're great players. They take their craft very seriously. So it's not surprising at all to see the success that they're having. But it is surprising to see just the Knicks in general just good. You know, it's, uh, you know I turned 30 last year and I can ca probably count on one hand the, the years that I've seen the Knicks be decent. And yeah. it's it's pretty amazing to see that, you know, some, some brothers that I hoop with in college, you know, yeah. they got the Knicks popping and relevant and going crazy <laughs> yeah the town's excited the town's excited and you're right it, it hasn't happened often but credit to everybody involved to get to this point uh and i'm curious because these three guys obviously they played a lot together villanova and now they're sharing the court in the nba what do you see if anything um when you're watching the game where you say oh yeah that's that's just the product of them sharing the floor and knowing each other so well do you see that play itself out on the court, on the NBA court when these three guys are playing? I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can just see it in the everyday, the, uh, every minute flow of the game, just uh, everybody knowing what spots to be in and, you know, Jalen getting it, getting to his spots and Josh hustling, rebounding, doing what he does and Dante making shots, being aggressive. I mean, it's just something that you everybody saw them work hard from in college and they just carried it into the pros. And Jalen Brunson, in particular, 45 last night against the Bulls in a win, 31 points per game, seven assists since Julius Randle went down. Uh, I know nothing surprised you about the team, but you didn't see this coming from Jalen, right? I mean, this has to surprise you a little bit. I mean, when when he was getting ready to come up for free agency, I was one of the first people just saying that I knew he was going to get $100 million. But mm. to say that is an understatement. He's underpaid. So I think I kind of sold him short like everybody else, <laughs> if I'm being honest. So, you know, he's been tremendous. He's having a, a career year, and he's only going to get better, man. He's just a, a competitor. He knows how to play. He plays the right way. And right now he's in a great groove, and I don't see it slowing down. He's going to carry this momentum, and I think the Knicks will take this momentum into the playoffs. The when you saw him freshman year when he came in to, to main line and, and you got your first, you know, interactions with him, uh, what was he like back then? And he, has he changed at all? I mean, he was just a very serious freshman. He's probably one of the more serious young guys that I had ever met. And you can see it in his everyday work and his preparation. And you can see in the success that he's having right here on the court that, you know, you don't have the success that he's having without taking the craft serious and it being important to you. And, you know, I think that's feeding off on the team, on all his teammates. And like I said, the Knicks are, the fan base is rejuvenated. The city's popping again. They're buzzing around basketball. And he's, he's a big, big reason why. <laughs> you knew he was going to, he was worth a hundred million a couple summers ago when you were playing with him at Nova. Did you see like, Hey, this, this, not kid, but my teammate here, he's going to make an impact in the league. Could you see that, you know, three, four, five, six years ahead of time where you saw how he played every day and, and you maybe projected that forward? Yeah, no, absolutely. It was not only him, but I, I felt that way about a few of my teammates. And, you know, that was just no different than, you know, just waking up, going to practice, going to weightlifting, and seeing guys every day. I just had that feeling about a bunch of guys on our team, not just him. You know, because I was fortunate to play with a lot of great teammates at Villanova. And, you know, we did a lot of great things. And I think that we were able to do that because of the talent level that we had. You know, everybody else in the country may have slept on us. But when you see how we work every single day, uh, nothing pretty much surprises you. So I had the high expectations for every teammate that I almost had at Villanova, if I'm being honest with you. That makes a lot of sense. And, and you guys proved it on the floor. Uh, I want to talk about the shot. Ryan Archer Dacano has the ball, comes up the floor. You're trailing, and you, you knock it down. You shoot it with confidence, and then it's mayhem on the floor after the <laughs> shot gets knocked down. I mean, I saw Josh, I think, was on the court. He rushes you. Jalen comes off the bench, rushes you, and it's a huge pile. What do you remember about that moment right afterward? What was, what was, what was that like with uh, your teammates and the Nova Knicks? 
No, nah, that was amazing, man. Like you said, Ryan Archer Diakno, another guy that Villanova legend that, that played for the Knicks. You know what I mean? Maybe they need to get him back. I think it's only right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it was just a testament to what kind of team that we had. You know, everybody was unselfish, and we had that much confidence in every player on the court. And then, you know, after you win a national championship, it's just all fun and all games, and everybody's enjoying it. And more importantly, you get to see your family, and then you get some time to re relax and enjoy the scene in Houston, which is what we kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. The only thing I wish for you, Chris, is if NIL was around back then because you would have cleaned up. Um, no doubt. Rick, I definitely would. <laughs> you would have. You would have cleaned up. It would have been fun to see. Uh, Rick Brunson, Jalen's dad, uh, here with the Knicks as an assistant. Uh, and I just want to know, was he around? Did he spend time around you guys when Jalen was at Villanova? Yeah, yeah. He would come up and obviously he would come to almost all the games and he would yeah. come work there and now he would come see his son and stuff like that. So we definitely saw Rick. We saw him during the recruiting process. So, you know, Rick's always been a great dude, always been nice and kind to, my, to myself and my family. Uh, we have a lot of respect for the Brunson family. The hearts in it, even Chenzo, you know what I mean? We we were together when we were young and we were all trying to figure it out, just grinding, just all we cared about was basketball. And just to see where they taking it, you know, it's just no surprise. Same thing with Mikhail, same thing with Sadiq in Atlanta, who's recovering from an injury. You know what I mean? It's, it, there are a bunch of guys that, you know what I mean? We had high expectations for that, you know what I mean? We're just so happy to see that they're doing well. They're doing what they're supposed to. Remarkable program that you are – back a part of they're fortunate to have you back a part of it um in this on the staff uh with kyle neptune and his group so um obviously it's about alumni at nova and I, it's great to see i want to know you mentioned houston and celebrating after the title did you have any of uh, these guys dante mikhail jalen on your on their recruiting visits when they came up to to check out campus <laughs> yeah no nah, we uh we definitely we definitely had the guys when they came up for their visits. And, uh, <laughs> I think it's safe to say that we all had a good time. We made sure that, you know what I mean, we handled our business because that was that's always first and foremost. But we definitely showed them, you know, what it was like to live on the main line a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I heard, I don't know if it's true, they were undecided before that visit, but then leaving that weekend, they're like, all right, we're locked in. We got to come back and party with Chris and play with everybody. We can't. We're not going anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, I just, all I'm gonna just leave it at is I know that we all had a good time. And, you know, it, it was it was it was a great visit for for both of them, and it's no secret. It is probably no surprise as to why they they wanted to come and hoop at Villanova. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you about Josh Hart because you guys played together for years, but you guys also high schools in a similar area. Did you ever play against him in high school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Josh and I, we played against each other our senior year of high school, and his team actually beat ours. But I, I met Josh my so our sophomore year of high school, so we mm -hmm. know each other since our sophomore year of high school, so we've been cool since then. I actually saw him and his now wife. I saw them off at prom, you know what I mean? So we go way back. Wow, wow, <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, now I believe they have twin uh, twin babies, so that's, that's yeah, tremendous. Um <laughs> He likes to joke around. He's all business about his his approach to his job, but he likes to keep it light in the Nick locker room. Was he like that at Villanova, or was he quieter, especially early on? <laughs> nah, Josh was always a, a super. Well, first he's super super competitive, so he definitely added added to my competitive spirit and my competitive juices. But he was always just a funny, fun loving guy. You know what I mean? Like to play video games. That's something that we kind of did back in the day. But you know, Josh was just. <laughs> he's always been a funny guy like to crack jokes and like to have a good time for sure <laughs> yeah he keeps it light but those those practices and those scrimmages when you talk about the competitive nature of heart and knicks fans have seen it with dante and jalen and also ryan archidiakana who a lot of people that i've talked to predict he will be a fantastic coach if he wants to go into coaching or a, a, an executive or a scout because uh, his mind for the game is so sharp. But those practices, those scrimmages, the competitive nature of the group, did that show itself in those when you guys were playing against one another? Oh, absolutely. It was the only way to be. It was the only way to gain your respect and show what you were about on the court because that's what mattered the most. You always wanted the respect from your peers and your teammates. So that competitive nature 
was just something that you kind of inherit the first day that you get there at Villanova. You just got to understand that this is just a big cornerstone of our program. And one of the biggest insults is for somebody to say that you're not playing hard. So you kind of never wanted that to be a thing for you. Now, Nick fans will want me to ask this, but I'm going to preface this by saying, uh, Nick fans, I'm sorry. As long as Sean Marks is running the Nets, and I think he'll be running the Nets for the uh, <laughs> foreseeable future, he's not trading Mikael Bridges to the Knicks. So it's not happening under Marks. I hate to be a wet blanket, but if you pictured, Chris, this Nick team with Mikael Bridges, because I think, you know, Nick fans like to to dream about it. And I know if the Knicks had the opportunity, they would, they would love to have Mikhail. If you pictured this team with Mikhail, what would they be like in the league and, and where could they go? <laughs> I mean, I think, I think we can all just say that we know that they would make a deep run in the playoffs just because having all those Villanova guys, they, they have a certain sense of core values that they built in college that they're just going to hold themselves to a certain standard. So add Mikhail to that mix is only going to make it, make it that much better you know what i mean because he's a tremendous player he competes at a high level he makes shots you know what i mean he he's super super competitive he guards the best player you know what i mean that's just the kind of player that he is and when and everybody's just seeing when he got to brooklyn you know what i mean just his game evolved and now he's thriving i think look let's see what happens with brooklyn in the off season they're going to be i think aggressive on on trying to get other top players there and the head coaching search is going to be interesting but i don't think don't turn the page on Bridges and the Nets at the moment because they could turn that thing around quickly depending on this summer. But in the here and now, Chris, you look at Dante DiVincenzo. I want to ask you about him, just his what, – what did you think about him as a teammate in Nova? Anything surprise you about his shooting this season because it's been lights out? No, nah, Dante's always been a super talented uh, basketball player, man. It was just – him putting it all together and having confidence in his game. And now you're saying his confidence at an extreme high. And now his game is just thriving. He's in a he's in a great groove. He's and I only think he's gonna get better. He's gonna get more comfortable and sky's the limit for them. And the, the three, Dante, Jalen Brunson, Josh Howard, all under contract for several years here. So the Nova Knicks are not going anywhere. Chris, I wanna I wanna close here. These guys are, are playing for seeding in the East. We don't know where they're going to end up and who they're going to be facing yet. But knowing what you know and, and seeing what they did last year, getting to the second round, what do you expect from the group going into this postseason? I mean, I feel like I have the same expectations that they have for themselves, and that's to go and try to win the whole thing. Anything short of, other than that is a disappointment. You know what I mean? If you ask them, I'm pretty sure the next time you see them, if you ask them, they, they aren't playing for, you know, just to make it to the second round and make it to the conference finals. They want to go and try to win the whole thing. So selling them short, we're not about to do that. We got faith in them. We know that, you know what I mean, they're playing great right now. They got to keep it up. But that's the standard, and that's what they hold themselves to as well. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I know that Nick fans uh, are appreciative of the Nova guys on this roster right now. Chris, we appreciate you sharing your insights. And maybe after we hang up, I could ask you a little more about Houston and the, the recruiting parties. But we'll keep that, we'll keep that off of uh, air. But thank you, man, for coming. Really appreciate it. And thank you for sharing your insights. That's going to do it for us here on the putback. We will be back Monday. Season wrap-up, Knicks likely to know their playoff opponent at that point. So keep an eye on us there and keep an eye on Honda Sports Night every night for your nightly Knicks coverage. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.